Hi everyone, I'm Shauna and welcome to my channel. Today's video is a really fun one and I'm bringing you a bit of a capsule wardrobe experience. No, I'm not spending any money and I'm presenting you with a hypothetical situation to hopefully get us thinking a little bit. So I gave myself the challenge of a $500 budget to build a capsule wardrobe for winter. And this is hypothetical, so the situation I created for myself is what if I lost my whole wardrobe right now and I needed to basically find clothes to wear? What would I buy? And if I had a $500 budget, what, what would I buy with that? I think this is an interesting scenario to play out seasonally and I think it helps me think about my clothing but my personal style as well and also helping me think about what would I prioritize, what would be, I guess just that, what are my priorities when it comes to rebuilding a new wardrobe, and like what would happen if you're experiencing a limited budget when you have to do that rebuilding. And so I am hoping to learn some things in this video about my personal style. So this hypothetical scenario of rebuilding the wardrobe with a limited budget of $500, um, I've done this actually two ways. The first is buying new, and the second one is a Poshmark only wardrobe. So the budget's the same, and there are no real parameters beyond you have to buy new in this one and you have to buy in Poshmark for this one. I did set a like three day window to build this because if this was in real life, then you would have to basically buy these things now. Um, and for new things, whatever promo codes are on the market right now, like I can factor them into the price. I have to buy things that are only like in stock in my size. The, I guess the last thing is that I get to pretend that all of this stuff fits really nicely and looks good on me and they were all great picks. So I have a couple of questions that I'm going to talk about at the end as a bit of a reflection and if there's anything else that comes to mind along the way I'll share that too. So I want to think about what the difference is between these wardrobes, color, style, quality, and secondly what which one do I prefer and which one do I feel like is more me and any kind of observations within that as well. If there was any other area I could add some more money to, what would it be and why? Um, and then the last one is what strategies did I use to build these wardrobes and like what was similar or different about them? And then the last thing is any last takeaways. So I really applied a practical lens to this exercise and I'm really curious to see as I'm talking you through my choices if anything else comes to mind. Because I think this is both fun and way to just learn more about my own style and potentially even just more than that. So I'm going to talk about the money as well, how much each wardrobe costs and how, mon how much each piece costs and everything like that. So let me take you into the first capsule. And one of the first things I realized when I'm like, okay, it's time to, like I have to buy this new capsule. I realize that shopping at places like Everlane or um, Cezanne, all those places that are more ethical or sustainable, they're just too expensive to build a new capsule around. And this is a place where quantity matters more than quantity, honestly. And that was a new realization to me. I thought that I would just go to Everlane in real life. I think my true real life budget would be somewhere between $500 and a thousand. I think I could spend up to a thousand, but that would be a little bit like hairy territory. So I do think it's just somewhat of a realistic budget for me. And even in the $1,000 price range, a thousand dollars won't get you six pieces at any of those stores. It just won't. So I went for, you know, like, stores that you could find at the mall because these have affordable clothing where I could actually buy 10 items or have a pair of pants or have pants that would last me one week without washing. And that's a realization that made me somewhat uncomfortable, but is, is the reality. And I'll talk about my Poshmark experience next. So let me 
talk you through some of the pieces that I bought. Well, not some of them, all of them. The first two are sweaters from H&M. They were $57.68, or 63 cents, and I had a 15% off coupon. So this black one up here, and then this stripe one at the bottom are the same sweater. And I currently own this sweater in white, so I know that it fits and I like it. And the black one, the reason why I wanted to get the black one is that it reminds me of the Thurlow sweater from Aritzia, which I really like. And I thought about, well, what if you just bought one anchor piece, like one really nice quality piece that you could build your capsule around? And I also thought about getting one of the blouses from Cezanne. Truly too expensive. At a base, like say the, the Cezanne stuff is $150 plus um, international shipping and handling. And because the $150 is under the $200 threshold, their shipping is just way too expensive. And then the third low sweater is $110 plus tax. So it's just too expensive and it eats up too much of the budget. So I picked somewhat of a lower quality item. It's similar looks wise, but I know because it's not made of the same materials as the Thurlow sweater, it just isn't as high quality. And I really like the black color because I think, or even this stripe one, the stripe one reminds me of something that I already have. And these two tops can mix and match with all of the bottoms, which I really like and kind of be a little bit more like in that realm between casual and elevated, but not totally elevated. So the next piece I bought is this um, cardigan, not the cardigan, it's a like a sweater, but it has a zip. And this to me feels like a more elevated sweatshirt, which I really like. And there's so many brands that have this style of sweatshirt. And I really like it. I like this elevated quality. I love the color and I, like this one the most out of all of the ones that I looked at because of the color and this one is from Reitman's and I also bought it along with these two jeans so there's a black skinny and then a blue skinny um, Reitman's has petites and curvy and curvy petites so that's why I really like them for jeans as of late and so all three of these purchases were $133 and I had like 30% off essentially and for me I really like a jean like still a skinny jean especially for winter and fall for me I've learned actually just recently that the straight leg is much it is pretty casual and I prefer it for spring summer not so much for fall winter and I think that some of these sweaters look a little bit more dressy with the skinny jean um, the next piece I guess I'll talk about all my Simon pieces next. I have this black hoodie. I currently own this black hoodie. Uh, it's $30 and I think I've had this for three or four years now. It's in excellent condition. A really great purchase for $30. And then I also picked these two pants over here, a corduroy pair of pants, which I own, and then these joggers, which I own. The joggers are about 60 bucks. And then the corduroy pants are about $90, which is the most expensive thing in here. And I opted to spend the money on the corduroy pants because they do fit great. They are a straight leg and I really, and they're actually too long for me. I was going to get them hemmed, but I realized no, because then I can roll them and they look pretty cute. So I think where I decided my money was going to go would be towards something that's going to add a little bit of specialness to the wardrobe. And a corduroy to me is a special kind of wintry material and I I'm pretty happy with that choice so altogether the Simon purchases were 172.83 and I did have a $25 coupon that's what that includes but that's pretty standard like if you spend over $175 on Simon's you can just add a $25 off coupon to your order the um, the last I guess a couple of purchase are these two sweaters. This one is a red cable knit and then this one is more like a clay kind of crew neck. I really like the um, this color, this clay color with all of the bottoms, especially the green and the blue corduroy. I really like that combination. And then I was also looking for a pop. I wanted a pop in all of my capsules and I selected red for this one because to me red feels a little bit more like a sophisticated color 
Whereas for some of the other pops that I could have picked, like I was thinking about some Zara sweaters, they're in a pink color and that just feels juvenile and a little, I hate to say it, but like a little tacky. Even though, I mean, I feel like it would look that way on me, even though I don't think it'll look that way on other people. So it just, I like the red. The red feels like a sophisticated pop and one that like, yeah, it does feel a little bit holiday, but I do currently have experience with red and I wear it fall all the way through to like, you know, into the summer. Um, and I really like the red sweaters that I own. So this was a really great addition. And I think the color of this clay sweater is super unique and I like that kind of understated desert type color. And the last piece I envisioned is like a nicer top. It's from RW Co. and it was like massively discounted at $40. Um, I did consider buying this back in the fall time, but I never did. And I really like this um, as like an, a nice kind of going out or date top. And I, that's kind of what I bought it to have that nicer thing. I think some of these tops could double as both, but none of them are as nice as this white one. I do like a winter white. So the total for all these pieces is $4.93.05 and I think that is a great price for seven tops and four bottoms. Now when I was looking through, when I was trying to buy these things, I was a little disappointed at the selection of sweaters and I think part of it was because I had some in mind that I, that I really like but are just a little too expensive. So knowing that there's this thing that I like a little bit more just kind of deflated me a little bit and in my opinion as well on all of these websites there's just a lot of like basic colors textures and styles and i felt like there was a lot of pop lacking and a lot of special pieces lacking and i think part of this is just the price range also i'm not sure about how the quality of these things would stand up through time let's now go to the posh capsule i want you to see right now i did go over budget and you know what it is what it is because i love i love with a capital l the tops for this capsule i think it is perfection i am swooning over these pieces now the green sweater you see in there is the one i'm wearing today um i love this this is my favorite winter sweater. I mean, the Franken Oaks Buckle sweater is probably my favorite all season sweater, but this is my favorite winter sweater. This is, I think, the third year I've had with it. And this is one that is closing in on 100 uses and I want this sweater forever. It is so warm. The Posh capsule feels so much more interesting to me than the other capsule. To me, this feels kind of fun and quirky. And I feel like this captures my style a lot better. I feel like there was way more options on Poshmark and like I had a lot of extra things that I want to put in here. Whereas I was kind of struggling for options with this new capsule. The problem with the Poshmark capsule is the pants. I would never in reality buy pants off Poshmark. I just won't. And so in reality, I don't think many of these pants would fit. I don't really have experience with a lot of these brands. Um, so I, I don't actually know how that would go. So let me talk you through my, my pieces here. This sweater at the top, this beige sweater. I love a beige sweater. Like I truly love beige. <laughs> I'm a beige fanatic. This is expensive. It's from Reformation and it is $55 this next sweater to it is a ralph lauren sweater and this one is more pricey which is 75 dollars but it's so beautiful this is this is the only sweater that tempted me to purchase because like it's in my size and this is the only thing that i was really tempted to purchase and i'm like oh you're so beautiful next up this cardigan is so pretty is in a really beautiful shade of like magenta pink it's j crew and it's 70 dollars it's kind of a lot for a cardigan but this is not j crew factory this is j crew and traditional j crew brand 
is great quality so far all the things at the top are higher quality brands and yes they are at a higher price tag but i think they're worth the money in my opinion the first top on the bottom is a striped top and this one is from everlane and is 45 dollars the sweater which is the one i'm wearing now is 25 dollars from everlane and then this guy the white top is from j crew and it is $50. This sweater combination to me just it feels perfect. I have this white date night sweater. I have these two really practical day-to-day -day sweaters. All of this could basically be worn to school. Um, I wouldn't wear these two on dates but maybe like these three. The white one I was thinking is like the equivalent of the RW and Co one and then this one is just like it's so beautiful you need to exist in this capsule for pants i have a black skinny jean and then this blue mom jean which is more like a slim tapered fit i have these red um like joggers and then i have these black you know those those dress joggers i have those the, like a crepe material and then i have this wool paper bag pant this wool paper bag pant is one that like i pushed other things out to buy it because i think it's sophisticated but these are such a comfortable pair of pant and i can wear it with literally every top i don't know about this one i, I would totally try it for a more casual look i'd be interested in trying it but it works with just about everything and the only pant that doesn't go with everything is the red one. I wouldn't, I don't think I would pair it with the magenta cardigan, but everything else, um, I would. So this one is $515, $15 over, I can live with that to get just beautiful things. And this is a capsule that brings a smile to my face and it excites me. And I would genuinely in my heart want to wear all of these things. Okay, if I wanted to bring it under budget, I would take off the red pants. There we go, I did it. I have four pairs of pants like last time. And then to take off the red joggers is $50, so it would be under budget. All right, now let's talk about what I called my ideal capsule, like what I would buy in an ideal world. And here is what I came up with. I am, okay, I think this would truly be the ideal. The only thing that hurts my heart about this is the pink sweater. The pink sweater is not here. And I'm really sad about it, but I took it off for practical reasons. I haven't said anywhere yet, but I'm taking leave of absence from school. So I literally have no meetings to go to, no school, no teaching, nothing. I'm just me, myself and I, and then there's dates with my partner. I know that my partner would hate that sweater. And I don't think that you should cater your entire wardrobe to your partner. But I do think that if your partner doesn't like something, like like it really bothers them, why would you wear it around them? Like if there was something my partner owned that I hated when I looked at it, he wouldn't wear it for me. 100% hands down, not even a question. And I feel like that's a courtesy. And if there's something that you really like, I don't mean to say don't wear it. I just mean to say either avoid wearing it around your partner or only on occasion with your partner and you can wear it in other parts of your life now because i am on leave the only place i could see myself wearing this would be with my partner and if that's the only occasion and i know that this would bother the crap out of him why would i buy it like if i had other occasions to wear it too then i could also occasionally wear it with my partner but I have no other occasions. And just because there's so many limit, like I'm limited for space, it does not make sense to buy the thing I can't wear as often as I would want to and would need to with a limited capsule. So I'm truly very sad about the pink cardigan. I'm crying inside a little bit, <laughs> but it's really practical. I genuinely love the pants that I chose in the first capsule. If I could, I would add on the wool pants by Aritzia. I think that would be a great addition to this capsule, but somewhat less practical. So they're staying off. The tops, four of the tops, four of the six are from the Poshmark capsule. I think the Poshmark capsule kicked butt in the top section, 
Um, I have been hating on Poshmark in my own life a little bit um, and was like, Poshmark's not for me. I don't like Poshmark. Turns out Poshmark is where it's at with the tops. So I have changed my mind a little bit about it. Thank you, capsule wardrobe video. Um, I really like this, um, the cardigan or not the, you know, the zipper top in my beige wheelhouse. I think I was contemplating putting the striped sweater versus the black one, but I just think the black one is more versatile. And then I have a striped top with the Everlane top there. So this is what I would pick in reality. 524.05 over budget again, but I think it's worth it. It's my capsule, okay? <laughs> So to answer some of my questions that I was asking myself, what's the difference between my two capsule wardrobes, color, style, quality? Um, to me, it's pretty clear I'm getting better quality with the Poshmark capsule. And I think these pieces would last overall longer. I think I'm getting a greater versatility in color, style, and brands. But these items as a whole are just more expensive than the other um the other new in capsule but i think you're getting what you're what you're paying for you're getting higher quality and i'm also genuinely more excited about these brands and i can also shop a greater variety of brands because i don't have any like minimum ship you know thing to fulfill and when it comes to something like j crew there really is no j crew online shopping in canada the shipping and the conversion is so expensive so to get it secondhand is ideal and then also something like ralph lauren i can't really afford to buy them all the time and i've actually come to really appreciate that brand's aesthetic in the last couple of months and secondhand i think is where it's at so everlane is a brand that i can't afford new but to see these pieces in great condition it's just better quality better pieces in my opinion from poshmark but more expensive i'm much less excited about the new capsule this one just feels a little bit boring to me but i also feel a little bit limited in options um and like what's available and what i can buy keeping in mind not having to spend money on conversions and then also things like shipping and import duties things like that I think it's pretty clear which capsule I like more and feels more me but I want to maybe answer this feels more me question a little bit more thoroughly I think the reason why the posh capsule feels more me is because because of the variety of stores I can buy from I can and also because of the huge quantity of goods on Poshmark, I was able to search for really specific things and then pick things from brands that I love and just buy the one thing. So I love a beige sweater and I don't like I would never buy this sweater new right now, like in this scenario, but it's like the perfect thing that I was looking for. So I was able to really curate that experience of finding the perfect thing that i could not do new it just wasn't the same and then also i think when it comes to like my personal style i like sweaters like this but i also like feminine pieces like frills and buttons and like some cool colors and i can't get that um with some of the more affordable brands or they're just not as appealing to me as brands like shopping from a brand that I know I already like, like J. Crew. I, I think that's just the answer is that I can have a more tailored experience on Poshmark and I can be much more specific with my searches and buy from brands that I know that I love that cater to my aesthetic in ways that are not possible with the new wardrobe. The new capsule just feels much more generic almost like styleless not that it doesn't have a style because there are certainly style elements in here you have the corduroy pants you have the jogger but the capsule just in itself just doesn't feel particularly unique and when i think about my style words because i was thinking about it when i was curating this wardrobe i was thinking about you know chic intentional feminine and simple 
and I think what's missing most from here is that femininity and that yeah the feminine aspect the romantic aspect I find this particularly missing from the new capsule if there was an any era I could add some more money to what would it be I think it would be accessories and I'm gonna have to show you on the screen some of the accessories that I was thinking about because I've really been loving headbands they've just been such a really nice way to spruce up my look and also like I haven't really been wearing my hair up because it's been so short but I really like hair bows and those things and I think that's also a way to jazz up an outfit um, and I would like even like $50 is enough to get a couple of things for either of these outfits so that's where I would put more money into but specifically for the new capsule if I was if I had like an additional $200 for this capsule I think it would look different even additional 100 or 150 dollars because i think i could at that point shop from some of my more favorite brands but then i think if i had let's say an additional hundred dollars i could buy maybe or 150 i could probably buy two saison pieces like replace two things in here with saison pieces which i think would help my wardrobe the new one feel more special and less generic that's how, that's the word i'm thinking about for the new capsule it feels generic what strategies did i use to build these capsules and like what are similar or different about these strategies for the poshmark capsule i went in for tops first because I knew they'd be easier to find and I also went into brands I love first. So my very first searches were Everlane, Bowdoin, um, Cezanne, and J. Crew. So the strategy I went for first was brands that I love and just searching for tops. The first couple of things that I found, um, I'm pretty sure I went to Everlane first. Once I found the striped top, I felt like I had a bit of a direction where it's like, okay I have this casual thing with a stripe nothing else really needs to have a print now because I have one thing that helps me make this capsule feel special but I also feel like Everlane is a bit of a masculine store it has a bit of a more androgynous style and I found myself really wanting to counter that and so that's why I have these two J. Crew more frilly feminine romantic pieces to counteract this stripe top and so in my opinion when i look at these things together i don't see like androgyny or masculine or masculinity in that kind of top whereas if it was paired with other things then i think i'm i might and so because of what i've paired with it it kind of has this balance and then i also have some of my favorite top style like sweaters sweatshirts that are also kind of balancing and i think that I was able to really balance things out here and work through a strategy of of balance of the masculinity with the femininity or the masculinity with the romantic but then also some of my more favorite casual styles and i just also went with i like a sweater like let's just go there and then with the pants for both of them i knew that i wanted black and blue skinny jeans and then the other two were kind of free choices and so the the pants search was a little bit more unstructured whereas when i went searching for the new capsule i went for brands that i knew fit me knew that i liked and i knew that were affordable and so this was a brand first strategy and was like what's available on your website and i think that's a choice that you would have to make in reality especially if there are shipping minimums like some websites where if you only bought one thing and you're paying five dollars for shipping not a big deal but for others with a fairly low shipping minimum it's not too hard to hit it so i was able to shop from a couple of brands but either way the brand strategy really mattered because i wanted to find things that i could afford that i also knew like i like the aesthetic of that thing or of that brand but also i felt a bit like I was grasping at straws because I couldn't shop at the brands that I loved the most and usually something like H&M 
or Reitman's or The Gap, those are the brands I might use to fill in one piece or two pieces and not kind of construct a whole outfit around. Or I've come to rely on Reitman's pants because they are really good for my size and my shape. And I also really like Simon's pants, but the tops from both of those places are not things that I love so much. So I think you see my The last thing is there any general takeaways? I think I've, I've learned a couple of things about my own personal style and shopping habits. Where I shop matters way more than I thought that it did. Like I thought, I truly in the past thought I could build out a whole capsule from Simon's, like even in this kind of exercise or H&M. And I just think that those brands aren't really my style anymore and they're okay for some particular kinds of pieces, but not an example of my style in a robust sense. I also think this concept of balance is really important or more so than I have conceptualized in the past and what creates a cohesive capsule to me is this idea of balance and in terms of style elements. So I guess one more what I mean to say that is that I don't need every piece in here to fit every word chic or romantic or simple. but. The capsule as a whole needs to be a little bit romantic. I need things that feel really romantic. I need something else that feels really simple. I need something else that feels like I'm at home in this, like my sweatshirts are my home. And I need some of that too. And that for me is what makes a capsule feel holistic and what makes it feel like me. And while brands matter to me, um, I think maybe, I, I guess going back on what I just said, this idea of balance matters the most. I can get that on Poshmark completely with tops, which blew my mind. I love this selection. Poshmark, you're back on the map for me. <laughs> and so balance matters a lot. Brands that I thought that I liked are just not it anymore. And I'm kind of moving on. But I guess also, I'm trying to figure this out as I'm, as I'm saying this. If the, if the item can help create balance, then it's irrelevant of where it comes from. I think that is very true, but there are certainly specific brands that will help me achieve these different parts of my style. You know what I'm saying? Like there was no brand that gave me that romantic style out of the ones that I chose. And there wasn't really romantic options so that capsule didn't feel complete to me. And it felt generic because it was more of that simple minimal and i don't know if i would qualify any of those things as chic so i think that's the takeaway and i also believe that for me what makes a capsule feel the most me and matters the most are my tops my bottoms are almost like i don't want to say they're irrelevant but they matter way less than anything else if anything can be an afterthought it could be the pants and also lastly accessories matter a lot to me and that can be a, a really clear way to help me feel more me and more aligned with my aesthetic and the way that I want to look. So that was my fun little experiment. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts on how this went in the comments. If you would like to see more seasonal wardrobe experiments from me, um, I would love to know that as well. So thank you so much for watching um, and being here today and I hope to see you again around here soon. Bye.